At 10 a.m., all living creatures in a peaceful village pass out. How is this even possible? And how do the local people deal with the multiple strange events after that? This is Movie Shortens, and today we're going to talk about the movie titled Village of the Dam. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care! In a small coastal town of Midwich, people are preparing for the annual village festival. The event draws the whole town's attention, including Jill, a principal of primary school. When the clock points at 10 a.m., all of the people and animals within the town suddenly fall unconscious. Frank, Jill's husband, is on the way back to Midwich. He also falls into a faint, causing the cart to run to the site and explode. The authorities arrive to find out what is going on in the town. Luckily, Alan, who is a local doctor, was out of town this morning. As worrying for his wife Barbara, who lives in the town, Alan gets to meet Susan, a government scientist, to investigate the strange incident. Strangely, as the clock ticks at 4 p.m., everyone awakens. The military also appears in town to help find out what happened. Shortly after, everything seems back to normal again until a couple of weeks later. All of the women in town learn that they are pregnant, even ones who weren't sexually active before. This causes the concerns and conflicts among folks' people. Later, the government decides to support the unexpected pregnancies. Susan informs the townsfolk that those who decided to have the child, the mother will be fully covered during the pregnancy including $3,000 per month and free checks up for the healthy pregnancy. Considering the values of having babies, all the women agreed to be mothers. As time goes on, all expecting women enjoy their pregnancy, from diet to pre-delivery classes. When it's time to give birth, the town medical center becomes very busy. One by one, five boys and girls are born healthy. But one of the girls, Melanie's daughter, is still born. Susan secretly takes the dead baby to her laboratory after that. As they grow older, their intelligence is off the charts and they all have the same blonde hair. David is Jill's son and soon can spell his name out. One morning, Barbara is cooking soup for her daughter Mara. The girl gets up angry because the soup is too hot. A moment later, Mara seems to control her mother with her green eyes, making Barbara dip her hand into the boiling soup. In the hospital, when Alan asks her about what happened, Barbara is not sure how to describe it. She becomes depressed after the incident. The following day, Barbara throws herself to the cliff. Not only Barbara, there are more and more mysterious accidents or deaths in town. Parents are in dilemma between unconditional love for their children and the fact that these children may not be 100% normal. As the children are 7 years old, the boys and girls pair together like mates, except David, whose female partner died. All of them seemingly show psychic abilities. Once, while the children have an eye checkup, the doctor accidentally irritates one's girl's eyes. Mara immediately shows up and controls the doctor's mind, making the doctor blind herself. As a principal, Jill thinks it is better for these children to have a specialized class. She asks Alan if he can teach them about general behaviors and sympathy. However, Alan refuses to Jill. David, however, develops an empathic bond with his mother after growing up with the absence of his girl partner. Several days later, David decides to look for the stillborn girl in the cemetery. David runs into Melanie who keeps drowning herself after the death of her baby girl. David can see Melanie had planned to commit suicide. As Alan also arrives to visit Barbara's grave, he tells David that the stillborn girl wasn't buried here. David then shares his condolences towards Barbara's death, which normally the children never do. After having a positive encounter with David, Alan decides to teach the children at school. When Alan gives his lesson, Jill calls him to meet her in the office. The children orderly take out the books and start to self-study. Suddenly, the drunk cleaning man opens the door. He starts to accuse the children for their crime. When the man hits one boy with his broom, the children feel threatened. As their eyes become green, eight of them except for David control the man's step up the ladder. Their eyes turn red and the man also drops himself from the roof of the building. Alan and Jill rush out to save him, but it's too late. The children leave the class, making Alan and Jill believe that they are not human. The following day, Alan decides to see Susan, telling her about his theory that the children must be the causes for all mysterious deaths. Susan also reveals that since the children were born, there have been more than 30 cases of suicide reported. This worsens when Susan informs Alan that not only Midwich, but some other small isolated villages in Europe or Asians experience the same phenomenon. People fall into blackout, simultaneous pregnancy, and superpower psychic children born. The CIA also got involved in the investigation for ages. There is one possible that the children are used for genetic hosts from aliens who attempt to synchronize the world. After that, 
Susan takes Alan to her secret lab. He is shocked at the sample, which turns out to be the stillborn baby whose face looks like an alien. Susan then reminds Alan about the psychic ability of the children. She warns him not to let them know what he has in mind. Alan becomes mad at Susan for hiding the truth for so long. Susan argues that she has to hide her thoughts from the children and focus on her theory until it is proved. She then pleads with Alan to help her by continuing the project to reduce the danger from the children. However, Alan abandons Susan and drives off. At home, Mara warns Alan not to destroy the group as it only makes the situation worse. Nobody can stop or hurt them now. Mara also informs Alan that the children would move to the local barn and begin living there. Learning from what Susan said earlier, Alan tries not to let Mara see his mind. Alan then sadly returns to his room. Later, the children arrive at the barn one by one during the night. David is not an exception. Jill advises him not to join the group as David is different from the rest of them. However, David says that he has left no choice in this situation and gets out of the car. The following day, a man drives to the barn to look for his daughter who is one of the children. However, when he insists on taking the girl home, the kids start to control him. He is forced to get back to his car. The man then drives to a fuel tank, causing a massive explosion. After that, Susan rushes to Alan to let him know about the government plans with the children. The military will arrive soon to destroy the children at all cost, even raising the town. For that, the locals have to pack up and leave the village as soon as possible. At night, Alan comes to the barn and talks with the children. As he can't convince the children to give up their cruelty, he realizes that there is no point in saving their lives. He covers his mind by imagining the ocean, preventing Mara from breathing his thinking. The following day, Mara talks with David about his sympathy, which is not allowed to develop in the colony. Meanwhile, the town pastor attempts to shoot Mara in the head with his gun. However, his action is caught by the other four children. The man ends up opening fire on his throat by himself. The death of this pastor raises the anger around the town. People start to hunt for the children in the night. As they face some of the children on the way, a woman starts to rage her anger over their evil crime. She is then controlled and burns herself to death. Meanwhile, Susan is packing up to leave the town before the government sends an army to the village. At that moment, Susan runs into Mara, David, and another boy. She tries to hide her thoughts about the upcoming government plan. As the trio enters Susan's lab, David finally gets to see his girl partner. The boy starts to cry, feeling sorry for the baby's death. Mara again uses her power, making Susan lie on the dissection table and kill herself with a scalpel. During that time, Alan has prepared a box of dynamite in his car to get rid of the evil children. The state police and military also arrive in town as planned. Alan arrives at the school to see Jill, telling her about how to stop the children. However, Alan wants to conduct the plan alone so he locks Jill inside before leaving. Jill begs Alan not to hurt David as he is different from others. Later, one of the police cars arrives at the barn. Mara and the other children begin to control the police officers, making them shoot at other coming cars. The police starts to massacre each other, turning the town into chaos. David, however, stays inside of the barn and is scared of what his friends are doing. Meanwhile, Jill also breaks the door, driving to the barn to save David. Alan also arrives at the barn for his lesson as usual. In order to get rid of the evil children, Alan makes a plan in which a briefcase containing dynamite will be set up in a children's classroom. As Jill has begged Alan to save David, Alan tries to do this by asking David to leave the classroom to gather books from his car. However, Mara can see his strange actions. The group starts to investigate Alan by penetrating his mind. At that moment, Jill arrives, but the children want to hurt her. David is very angry and rushes to knock Mara down. By thinking of a brick wall, Alan is able to create a psychological barrier to keep children unaware of the existence of the bomb. Alan rushes Jill to bring David outside before the time set. In the end, the children break through Alan's mind, but it's too late. The bomb explodes, destroying the barn and killing everyone including Alan. Jill and David survive after the massacre. Jill tells David they would all move to a place where no one knows them. In the last scene, David is sitting in his mother's car, looking into the distance. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notification. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.